Hey guys, Shane McMurray from The Wedding Report. In this episode, I meet with Patrick. He's the creator of Forever Two Rings. He's also a designer, a manufacturer, and jeweler located in St. Clair, Michigan. Check it out. Patrick, thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Uh, tell me about your business. Uh, tell me your website, your Instagram, uh, where you guys are located. Oh, hi. Right, good afternoon, Shane. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting business that we fell into. Uh, I've been a retail jeweler. I've been a bench jeweler for a long time, actually 30 years. And uh, I sold my store just a couple of years ago to my son. Wow. And uh, instead of uh, becoming a Walmart greeter or uh, hitting a golf course, I decided to uh, start create a new business, <laughs> creating a new business. Uh, I got on the bench and I started playing around a little bit. And, and uh, I know this is all about wedding rings because that's what we do. That's what we make. We make wedding rings. Um, but that was not my concept. That was not how this all even began. Wow. So my industry, right? We've seen a, a big dramatic change over the years where people just aren't getting married right away. You know, it's not they, they date, they fall in love, they get married, you know, get a house, get the kids. It's not happening like that so much more anymore. So they're they're getting together and they are, uh, getting a house and sometimes they have children, but they're not the, the marriage and the vows and all that aren't there. Yeah. So this true. particular segment was very large and it's getting bigger and it's not just in the United States, Shane, it's everywhere. It's, it's worldwide. Yeah, I know. Um, and, and my best friend who's a builder, he's been with his gal for 15 years. Uh, they're not married. They have two kids. They love each other. They're committed to each other. But when she goes out at the bars occasionally with her girlfriend, she gets hit on and it drives him crazy. And she comes home and tells them and all that. And, and she says, you know, I don't have, I don't have a ring on. Right. So um, anyway, in the back of my mind, I started thinking there's a segment of our population who needs some jewelry to show that they are in a committed, loving relationship. Not that they're married, but they're in a committed, loving relationship. So as a jeweler, I started putting together two bands, right? The idea is one band represents each person, but they're interlocked. And it's just almost like a magic trick, right? Yeah. But they don't, they don't come apart. And so that was the thought process of having uh, Forever 2. And one day, as I'm driving down the road, because I'm testing the bands, as I'm, as I'm making them and yeah. changing the, the different dynamics of them and the curvature, I always wear them and I, I test them. So one day I'm driving down the road and I'm literally grabbing onto my steering wheel really tight. And I said to myself, I said, wow, this is the most comfortable wedding band I ever wore. And it just dawned on me. I'm like, wow, this, this can be not only for the segment of the people who aren't married, right? But it could be a great wedding band. So I, I ran back to my jewelry store and I called the, the patent and trademark attorney. <laughs> and I said, Hey, Molly, uh, you know, what do you think of this? The world's yeah. most comfortable wedding band. Can we can we trademark that? And she said, Oh, Pat, that's pretty bold. You know, that's a bold yeah. statement. And I said, Well, it's bold, but it's true. And I can prove it. Yeah. And so uh, it took about two years of all this wrangling back and forth and the legal and the U.S. Patent Office gave us that title. That this nice. is the world's most comfortable wedding band. Wow. So, um, so now we have uh, two segments, obviously, that we're going after. And uh, the couples who are in a loving, committed relationship, not married, and the couples who are in a loving, committed relationship who are married. Um, and we're really excited because the IJO, which is the Independent Jewelers Organization, it's about a thousand jewelry stores uh, throughout the nation. Mm -hmm. They got wind of our product and they are uh, launching this nationally on March 1st. Nice. Uh, so March 1st at their national convention in Colorado Springs, they're bringing out Forever 2. So now Forever 2 won't be just, you know, you have to go to the website and buy it and, and all that kind of stuff. You can actually go to your local jeweler around the country and uh, try it on, test it and, and see what happens. Um, but, you know, the, the thing is, is with my product, is, as well as most jewelry, yes, you can buy it online, you see a picture of it and it looks nice and you have all the specifications and the price. But this particular product in a lot of jewelry, you actually have to try it on. You, you really, to, to, you know, I can tell you till I'm blue in the face that it's the most comfortable wedding band in the world. 
and then you'll be like, yeah, well, whatever, you know, maybe, maybe yeah. not. You don't believe me. When you try it on and you can put it on at the store and you can roll it up and down your finger like really easily, then you get it. Then, then, then you understand what it's all about. So, you know, even though we do have bands on Amazon, amazon.com, and we have our own website, yep. it, 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 there's nothing like having a physical piece of jewelry in your hand to test, to feel, to touch, and, and that's so much better. So having the IJO jump in and now we can go, you know, throughout the country um, and, and hopefully in any market that you're in or any, any market that customers are in, there's going to be a local IJO jeweler, independent jeweler that will be carrying forever two bands in nice. 2020. That's nice. Yeah. Um, you know, what you said about people wanting to try it on, I, I find that that is the case even with even engagement rings because, you know, when Blue Nile started, um, and when you know the internet became started growing and, and become more popular, I started tracking how much people were spending on um, how much people were spending online. Like how much were they buying for rings online? And what I realized was is there was a basically it it leveled off and has actually gone down. So um, you know, people thought, oh, okay, well, like 50% of the market's going to buy their wedding bands online because, you know, it's, it's the way to go. It's the way to do things. But the reality is, is, is what you just said. People like, especially that type of purchase, I think people really want to look at it. They want to touch it. They want to try it on. They want to feel it. Um, and it makes it difficult uh, to do that when you're looking at something online. Now, there's obviously some percentage of the population that will go look for stuff. Uh, go to a jeweler, kind of try stuff on, whatever, and look at it, and then go find it online cheaper or whatever. Um, yeah. Or they just trust online and they get it like that, and that's what they want to do. Um, so there's, but but I find that that and the and the red wedding dress, you know, have kind of stayed under twenty percent of the market for for buying online. Um, so I think your move into the IJO. Uh, and then trying to get your product out into the local independent jewelers is is definitely the way to go. Um, because you're right, people are going to go into the store, they want to try it on, and that's how they're going to realize it's a great product. They do. And, and when, you, when you look at a product online, a lot of times it, it's just a product that's a picture of a product that's doctored up, right? They Photoshop it, they make it look pretty, they make it look good. That's not necessarily the same ring that you're going to get when you, when you order online. Yeah. And so what we found um, is that people see it online and then they get it and then they don't realize, oh, you know what? It looks a little more cloudy than that picture. Right. Or it's definitely a lot smaller than that picture. It, it, you know, there's a lot of lot of things. And but the thing that I, I find more so in being an independent jeweler um, in a family owned operated operation, uh, the independent jewelers really step up and take care of their customer because it, it's not a, a one and done kind of sale for us. So if you come in to get your engagement ring, yes, that would be great. If, if you bought an engagement ring from us, we would love you and, and really, you know, we'd make some money. But that's not it. Hopefully we're going to get your wedding band business. Hopefully a year from now we're going to get your anniversary band business or anniversary ring or anniversary uh, gift. Then you got birthdays, Christmas, Valentine's yeah. Day, right? All these things. Um, and then eventually, Shane, you're going to screw up. You're going to make your wife mad, and you're going to need you need you're going to need to come in and get her a watch or, or yeah. something else, right? Or yeah. you're you she's going to have a baby, and you need a push present. So when uh, a customer comes in into an independent jeweler or a jeweler, they're not looking at a one and done. Where internet sales, it's more like okay, let's make the sale, and we're you know we're out of here. You know we mm -hmm. we made our money, and there's no relationship. There's no relationship between that screen and the customer buying. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, if, if you buy a diamond ring from a jeweler versus buying it online and there's some problems with it, you know, diamonds fall out, they get loose. Yep. I mean, it does happen. Don't get me wrong. So they can go back to that jeweler, get in their car, you know, 10 minutes away and they get it taken care of. Where yep. if you bought it in a year from now and diamonds are loose or falling out, what do you do to, you know, go back to the screen and go, Hey, I got a problem. Yep. You know, you gotta so, find a local repair person to fix it for you. Yeah, and, and Blue Nile, you know, when they came on board, oh my gosh, did they, they tear up our industry, right? And one of the reasons why is because they came in with really low, low prices. They, they, just, they just 
buried us. I mean, it was just a little bit above wholesale, what they were selling the diamonds for. But what happened is over time, they realized they were losing money. Like yeah. they were gonna go bankrupt because the cost to acquire a customer, whether it be in person or online, costs a lot of money. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're only selling 10% over cost, that's not gonna do it, right? You're not yeah. gonna be able to cover your cost. So Blue Nile had to raise up their prices and at the same time, all the jewelers around the country, I don't care who you talk to, lowered their prices because they were trying to compete with the Blue Niles of the world. Yeah. So now the Blue Nile price and the independent price are really neck and neck. Um, possibly the independents are a little bit more, but it's not like double or, you yeah, know, exactly. or anything yeah. like that, right? You're, you probably pay a little premium, but believe me, the, the benefits of having a person to go to and if there's an issue or whatever, having that is is a huge benefit compared to you know just an online one and done kind of sale yeah um so you you're basically selling these right now you're selling them online through your website um right. forever2.com right right and um and then you have some on amazon and that sort of thing so tell me how how that process works like so if i order a ring from you um, do you have a whole manufacturing process that you have involved in this where you make it or you have some, you know, what, what does that look like? So we started out small. We only have eight people that work for us for the Forever okay. 2 company. Um, but Coglin Jewelers is, is now my son's store, but that's still where we do most of our manufacturing. And it's in St. Clair, Michigan, about an hour north of Detroit. Okay. Um, and it, this past year, we bought another building just north, uh, a little manufacturing building in a, a distribution warehouse. Yeah. So we, we are ramping up. So we're going to be able to start getting 75, 80 jewelers per month, at, you know, getting them fully stocked. Uh, so the idea is within a couple of years, we can actually handle the whole country. But yeah. we're, we're small, we're just getting going. Um, and, and I don't want to grow too big too fast. Yeah, that's I don't smart. want to be able to, to handle everybody, you know, whether it be the small mom and pop jeweler or the jeweler who's got five stores and he's got a hundred employees, right? I, yeah. I want to be able to handle all of them. And then and some of the online business, because there are some people who aren't, near a jewelry store you know they, they could be a hundred miles away from the closest jewelry store so really they have to buy online in order to to get anything that they want that's convenient so yeah you know it's a funny story about um my my wife's cousin jason he came into the store one day looking for a wedding band. we sold him his engagement ring so he came back to the store obviously he's looking around and and he didn't buy he looked at some gold bands some silver bands some platinum bands tungsten bands and he didn't buy and that's common people Generally, you're not you're not in a big rush to buy a wedding band. You know, yeah. usually you know the date and that you're ahead of the game. And he was. So a couple of weeks later, we didn't hear from him. But I saw at night I got a, a notice from Amazon that Jason bought a wedding band on Amazon.com. And I'm like, what in the world is going on here, right? So I called him up and said, hey, what is, what's going on? He goes, oh, Pat, you know what? I really liked what I saw there, but uh, you know, I'm busy, I'm working crazy hours and it was 11 o'clock at night. You know, I just punched it in and your, your thing came up, so I just bought it, right? And so honestly, that was a, a huge red flag for me and a few huge ding, 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 because just as that was happening, we were negotiating with the IJL, you know, how we're gonna do this with the independent. Yeah. And needless to say, when an independent finds out you're selling online or you're selling on Amazon, they freak out, rightfully so. Because we don't want to compete with our, our yeah. uh, retailers, yeah. right? So we're going to make a deal with our retailers that they, they actually get the commission if anyone who buys on Amazon.com or on our website and they're in their market, they actually get the commission for the ring. And then we give them their name, you know, name, address, phone number and say, hey, look contact them, service them, take care yeah. of their cleaning and polishing and, you know, whatever needs that they might have. Um, so it's a win-win for us that we, we get a customer obviously from online and then we can actually help support our, our local jewelers because they're, they're going to need to support that particular individual as well. Yeah. And so now that that person who buys it online, whether it be on our website or, or Amazon, 
now they have a jeweler that they can go to locally in case something happens. You know, the ring breaks, the ring, you know, uh, mm -hmm. disappears, it gets stolen or whatever the case may be, then they have somebody to go to. So uh, it's, it's an unusual situation because in most jewelry stores and most stores, their brands sell direct to the consumer, whether it be through Amazon or their own websites, the brands are selling directly to the consumer as well. Yeah. And it drives us as independents crazy. You know, you go buy a Citizen watch and then you go online and you find Citizen watches being sold, you know, through Citizen. And it's like, yeah. are you kidding me? Right. You know, we're spending the money to advertise Citizen. We're spending the money to service the customer, you know, all of that. But yet they're, they're kind of like, selling yeah. out from under us and in our case we're not going to do that to our retailer so if our if a sale is made within that retail market that jeweler will be notified and hopefully they can uh, you know connect up but the one thing about online whether it be amazon or your own website or or whatever it is convenient i mean i can't tell you how many times i'll be watching a tv show and i'll see something and i'll google it on my uh, or i mean you know go on my laptop and i'll google it yep. and then i'll I'll, I'll buy it at 10, 15 at night, you know, right? Because it's just convenience. Yep. Um, so I think retailers, you know, brick and mortar stores have to have some sort of website and not just a website anymore. It really has to be an e-commerce site. It has to be somewhere that, you know, put the products up, sell them. You know, years ago, it used to be super, super expensive to, do, you know, build a website, especially an e-commerce site. But now with uh, platforms like Shopify and things like that, where it's a plug and play and, and everything's already built, you know, they just have to spend $39, $49 a month for that. Um, and, and also spend the time to build it, right? You know, yeah. physically put the stuff in. But I, I think anybody selling products these days, anybody uh, really needs to have some sort of online presence and some sort of e-commerce thing just for the convenience side of things. Yeah. Um, this, this this problem you're talking about is not is not new. Um, back in the early mid uh, early '90s, I used to work in the hair business, and um, I worked for um, well, I worked in the hair business in the salon for a while, and then I worked into in the distri distribution business and the you know uh, as a distributor. And uh, manufacturers that were making products, hair products, were having the same challenge of they would have their hair products. They would end up in in uh, a retail shop or a retail store like the grocery store, and yet the salons are selling them at double the markup, right? Because that's right. that's how it works in that business. Right. It's basically you know forty percent, fifty percent, and and then that's the retail price. And then, but the grocery store was selling it for three or four dollars cheaper. <laughs> so right. salons are getting mad, and they're like, "I'm not going to buy your product because it's in the it's in the drug emporium or it's in the." You know, the local grocery store. So how do you, you know, you, how, how do you deal with that? I, I don't, I don't think there's much you can do because, you know, as a business, you have to look at all the opportunities for growth and, um, and you have to do it either in a way that you can benefit everybody or you have to limit yourself and with to say, look, this is the only way we're going to do it. And that's it. Right. So either you sell direct through your retailers and you work that by itself, or you have to do both channels to grow your business. Cause at the end of the day, it's a business also, and they have to look at what their margins are and how do you grow that? Um, so it's a challenge. Um, I don't know what the right solution is, but it sounds like you came up with a pretty reasonable solution to the problem of I need to be online so that I can sell my product as well, but you're a local independent shop. Let me give you the commission because that person is local. Uh, and then let me share their information with you. And then that way you can build a relationship with them. I think that's, that's a, a valuable uh, way to look at that where you're still maintaining a good relationship with your local independent and then being able to, to market and, and do work online. Yeah. And the, the other thing that I found, you know, obviously there's Yahoo and Google and Bing and all the search engines, right? Yeah. But the number one search engine is Amazon. 58% of all product searches are done on Amazon. So a lot of people will, will bypass Google and, and Yahoo and all that yeah. and go directly to Amazon and go, okay, I need this ring or I need this bracelet or I need this, you know, guitar, whatever the case may be. And, um, 
the one thing I do like about the internet is the research, right? You can, you can spend, I, I bought a camper here recently and I probably spent six months hitting every blog and every thing. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. I become a, a camper expert in, and a lot of people are doing that with, with high end pr purchases, such as diamond rings, you know, before you yeah. spend $5,000 for a diamond ring, know what the heck you want. Uh, and, and there's enough information out there that you can research and, and, and become fairly competent as what you what you're looking for. So I do suggest, you know, when people are out online, you know, do your research, but then hit your local market, you know, whether it be your local stores or, or someone nearby, touch, feel, check it out. Um, and, and they'll be much happier buying it human to human than online yeah. and obviously there's some things that you're better off buying online but other than that other than yeah, that there's a big there's a big push for i mean and it has been going on for a while for buy local uh kind of deal and then um i was just reading a report recently about uh independent bookstores mm -hmm. and uh they're actually growing again uh whereas you would think that you know bookstores amazon you know owns the market for books, but independent bookstores are, are growing because they're, they figured out how to, um, you know, build an experience around the book, mm -hmm. around books in general, right. Versus just, uh, you know, trying to sell books. And, um, it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting, uh, article. Um, but yeah, um, it's experience, it's an experience when you go, it, if you're just going to buy it off the shelf, that's one thing, but you should, especially for jewelry, there should be an experience and it should be good for the people when they go into a store to, to feel good about their purchase, feel good about where they're buying it from, you know, and of course, when they do that, that, that money typically stays within the community as well. Yep, you know, exactly. It goes to the dry cleaner, it goes to the restaurant, it, you know, goes to the gas station. So yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, for you as a business, what would you say is working well for you right now? Um, being different and unique. So we've hit a few of the bridal shows to kind of test, uh, test what's going on. Yeah. Uh, test our, test our rings and showing it to the future brides and, and all that. And, uh, the one comment I, I get from them over and over again, wow, this is really different. This is really unique. Um, and the, the largest, the largest bridal show, well, I shouldn't say the largest bridal show, the most interesting bridal show we went to was an LGBTQ bridal show. And um, they really, and they really went after this product because it was different, it was unique, it wasn't you know, traditional and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they really liked the idea that they could have matching bands. You know, um, and so they can pick out different colors, you know, yellow or rose or white, but they love the idea of having two matching bands for, for each other. Mm -hmm. In the other couples, I would venture to say, usually the, the gal gets a diamond engagement ring and her wedding band's usually a diamond band that goes with it. And the guy generally gets a, you know, gold band or, or something plain. Right. That, yeah. That's yeah. Be the world today. Um, yep, that's how we do it, man. <laughs> there you go. You got the plain band. <laughs> um, so what we what we also found was our little niche talking to the, these gals is the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of them are in the nursing industry or I shouldn't say nursing, medical industry. And, you know, they got to take their bands off or or yeah. now a lot of them in the construction industry where they also have to do the same, take their bands off and they lose them or, or, or you know, it, it just that's not a good option so with our bands being the fact there's no diamonds or any gemstones sticking out of them they can put gloves over them really easy and the other thing is when you have one of our bands on they actually roll so if you grab a, a shovel you know or if you grab something tight hammer these things move they never pinch they will never pinch your, your hand and so um what we're we're telling the the people to do is look at these bands for two things one is you know, if, if you got your diamond band, that's great. You know, we're not telling you don't wear your $5,000 diamond ring. But if you're going to work and you need a, a plain band or you need something that's uh, very smooth, this is it. And the other thing is, um, I've been in a travel industry a little bit with uh, cruise ships. We, we, we make jewelry and we sell it to the cruise ships as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I'm in the Caribbean a lot. And every day every day these stores in the Caribbean the girls come in running in you know oh my gosh I lost my ring I lost my ring well they go in the ocean and their diamond ring comes off you know they're snorkeling or, or whatnot yeah. 
and they lose their diamond rings and they're heartbroken, right? Yeah. Especially, gosh, on someone on a honeymoon. Yeah, you know, for sure. It happens. it happens. So what we tell people is get one of these for your travel. Like keep your $5,000 ring, but wear this when you're traveling. So it's two things. One is, gosh forbid, if you lose this, it's $129 or, you know, if it's a gold one, maybe $500. It, it's not break the bank oh my gosh you know life's yeah. over the other thing is in the caribbean you don't like to talk about this very much but there's a lot of theft and the reason why they look at the girls for the louis vuitton purses they look for the guys with the rolex watches they look for the girls with the five ten thousand dollar rings right that's who they're targeting yeah so when i tell people you know they, they laugh at me and i said when you go to the caribbean and you get off a cruise ship and you're walking around town take the cruise ship bag the canvas bag that says royal caribbean on it don't take your louis vuitton purse right yep. leave your rolex watch in the safe at the at the ship uh, buy a cheap little swatch or a waterproof watch or something and mm -hmm. and god forbid do not flash your diamond rings around you know it's i know it looks great in the sunlight in the caribbean sun you know to flash that diamond <laughs> ring it looks awesome but it's also a lure for the bad guys yeah. so you know um this is a great travel band as well and we've had at, at Coglin Jewelers, we've had a few people, you know, buy their $5,000 diamond rings and their diamond wedding bands. And then they pick up one of these for their, you know, either work or travel. It's a, like a travel band. Yeah. So yeah. It's, just, it's just something unique. That's good. So um, what would you say are your biggest challenges right now? Uh, so when a brand, we're a new brand, right? So typically new brands to start out cost 10 to $20 million. And I don't have that kind of money. Um, uh, so, so that is going to be my biggest hurdle. You know, where go, do I run out and get investors and do I do all this kind of stuff? And my, my thought process is no, I'm going to start off slow, build uh, as I go. Uh, we did apply for Shark Tank, so who knows? Maybe Kevin O'Leary will will throw some money my way. Right. Um, <laughs> but but the idea is to to build and grow. I mean, that's what I did with my retail business. Um, when I when I bought that many many you know almost thirty years ago, we were doing two hundred thousand a year. Now we're doing well over two million a year. So and and that was just a slow and grow process. And yeah. if you grow too fast, you get burned. And I've learned that watching it too many times so yeah we're just going to grow nice and slow and uh but getting the word out there like if i wanted to go nationally without say the ijo or right if i just want to let a, the whole world know well that cost is phenomenal for to customer acquisition uh, yeah. um so anyway that's how we're going to do it it it's uh, my biggest challenge is getting the word out and and making sure that you know, when I say it's world's most comfortable wedding band, you get to try it on and you get to say, yeah, I get it. Wow. That feels great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's true. I mean, like you can grow too fast and then you, then you basically can kill yourself. <laughs> right. right. I mean, uh, I, I think the best, I mean, personally, uh, I'm in the same, um, mindset as you grow slow, take your time, uh, work, you know, use the money you make and then put that back into your business and then just continue to grow the business slowly until you get to a place where you can then start to expand, right? It takes longer. It takes more effort and more work. But the reality is, is you don't have a bunch of people that own your company. You own your company. And, um, you know, you just got to be patient. You just got to be patient and work, work, work it. And, you know, it just, it just takes time to, to make right. it work. So, right. and, and that's the way we're going to do it and slow and steady. And hopefully in five years, the brand is strong enough to where people are going into jewelry stores saying, Hey, do you have that forever too? You know, that yep. kind of thing. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm retired. I, it's not that <laughs> I, I, I need the money or anything. It's just, I, I love the business and I love yeah. what I'm doing. So, um, the money, the, the growth and all that, that, that's like a benefit, but that's not, yeah, that's not my reason behind it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. If you love what you do, you really never retire. Right. I mean, right. just doing different things and the thing that you love to do. Right. Right. Maybe you're not doing what you used to do day to day, but you know, you're doing something different. So yeah. Yep. That's good. Um, so do you have, so for, uh, the last question is, do you have a, a best or worst or 
wedding or business story for me? Well, I'll tell you, uh, in the retail world of jewelry, the one, the one thing that we love that doesn't happen enough anymore, it used to happen a lot, now it doesn't happen much anymore, but it is cool when it happens. It's when the, the young man comes in with his mom. That's the coolest thing ever. Uh, and in our case, because we've been around long enough, a lot of times the mom bought the engagement ring or wedding ring from us, from our yeah. Coglin Jewelers, right? Mm -hmm. um, so she's the one saying, hey, son, you know, you got to go to Coglin's and, you know, come with me. Let's go down to the store. Yeah. Um, so for, for us, that's the coolest thing is when the mom or sometimes it's the parents, but usually it's the mom comes in with the, the young man and, you know, he's nervous. He doesn't know, oh, mom, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to get. You know, she's so little, da, 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 you yeah. know, and, and usually the mom's, are re, you know, rubbing him on the back saying, it's okay, <laughs> you know, we'll get you through this. <laughs> that's, that's the, that's the cool one for me. That, that, that's like, that makes it really great. Yeah. That's gotta be an awesome feeling to see that happening. It is. It, it is. It, it's really, it's heartwarming, you know, yeah, and, for sure. uh, so it, we, we've seen it, we, again, it, it doesn't happen a lot, but it happens enough to make you feel good. Yeah, yeah. Patrick, thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks, Shane. Have a great weekend. Okay, you too. Have a All good right. day. You too. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. I hope that you found it helpful. Please share it with other people. Also, if you're getting married or you work in the wedding industry, I would love to interview and share your information with other people. Send me a text, 520-399-8580, or shoot me an email at letschat at wedding.report.